Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In this video I'll take you through the design and fabrication from scratch of the tremolo arm assembly on Brian May's Red Special Guitar. Although you can buy these from Red Special Guitar Parts suppliers, some I see don't have authentic section lengths or bend angles, and often come as part of a full tremolo tailpiece assembly at considerable cost. If you fancy making your own, or you're just interested to see how it's done, please stay with me. It's well known that Brian and his father Harold made the Red Special from salvaged timber and modified commonly available household objects. This piece is a saddlebag holder from my bike. Classic bicycle and motorcycle saddlebag support bars are still readily available today, and some versions bear a striking resemblance to the Red Special tremolo arm. The only difference I can see in most of these is that they attach via a section of tubing rather than a brass bushing, so I assume that Brian cut off the tubular end and brazed his brass bushing on. Whether it was simply an intelligent choice of donor object, or a combination of fortuitous design and careful modification, the Red Special tremolo arm is ergonomically perfect for its intended purpose. The design requirements are that the main section falls conveniently to hand as it describes an arc that follows the player's forearm movement, and the raised section must clear the volume and tone control knobs. My YouTube videos cover a wide range of topics related to Brian May's musical equipment, and further information on all my projects is available on my website, dsgb.net. Please support my work by liking, commenting and subscribing here on YouTube, and follow me on social media platforms including Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. To derive the tremolo arm design in CAD, I compared photographs of the original guitar, drawings available in the public domain, and the dimensions and form of the hardware fitted to my Red Special, which was custom made to authentic specifications. Summarising the key features with approximate dimensions for you. The first section is one and a quarter inch long, the second section three quarter inch long, and the third section approximately four inches long. The distance from the edge of the brass bushing is five and three quarter inches, which increases to six inches when the plastic tip is attached. Working the information up into this design sketch in TurboCAD, I constructed the whole assembly including the mounting post and its steel bushing, the locking washer, domed nut and washers relative to both the guitar body surface and the vertical centerline of the tailpiece fulcrum. At this stage I sketched the radiuses of the two vertical bends and the horizontal bend to help me determine the size of post required to form them. You can see that the tip is located one and three quarter inches vertically above the tailpiece fulcrum center line, and one and one quarter inch horizontally from the bushing pivot point. Removing the construction elements and overlaying the bend angles, we can see that the vertical bend angles are 37 degrees between the first two sections, 29 degrees between sections two and three, and the horizontal bend angle is 18 degrees. The brass bushing on my custom made tremolo arm is 5 8 of an inch or 16 mm diameter and 7 16 of an inch or 11 mm high. The diameters of the steel rod itself and the mounting post hole are both metric 5 mm on my hardware, although I suspect that the original is 3 16 inch diameter. The original brass bushing has a sizeable roundover on both the upper and lower edges, which contributes to a softer, more handmade cosmetic appearance. To construct the 3D object, I drew a 3D spline curve to form the path along which the circular cross section was fitted. The end result is the 3D render I'm illustrating in this sequence. To ensure that the bends are formed accurately, it was necessary to design a bend forming jig. One benefit of using CAD to design objects is that it facilitates the design and fit testing of any jigs and templates needed to make the main object and auxiliary components of a multi-component assembly. This required careful consideration to minimise both the material costs and the fabrication work, because I only wanted to make one or two tremolo arms for this design, build and video mini project. I resolved to use a section of angle plate between 5 and 8 mm thick into which I could drill mounting holes for stainless steel dowel sections and forming bushings. I also considered whether to bend the steel rod before or after brazing into the brass bushing. 
The end result of these considerations is the assembly I'm illustrating in this render sequence. The bushing is mounted on the vertical surface with a cutout to accommodate it, which places the steel rod in contact with the horizontal surface. I have made provision for a 6mm stainless steel dowel pin to brace the rod against during the first bend, two 10mm diameter M5 stainless steel bushings to form the two vertical bends, and one for the horizontal bend. I will secure the jig to the T-slot bed of my mini drill press table using two M6 countersunk machine screws. In the completed jig assembly I'm showing you here, I drilled the two holes in the vertical section too high, but this shouldn't affect the usability of the jig. Moving into the fabrication section of this video, firstly let's take a quick look at the materials I'll be using to make the tremolo arm itself and the bend forming jig I showed you in the previous sequence. I'll form the bushing from this section of 5 8 inch or 16mm diameter brass rod by cutting it to 11mm high. I tried to save some effort by sourcing custom made bushings with these dimensions from a mail order supplier in the UK, but the central mounting hole had unfortunately been drilled out of tolerance at 5.25mm and would have been a poor fit on the mounting post. I'll form the arm itself from a section of 5mm diameter stainless steel rod. Imperial 3 16 inch diameter stainless steel rod is available in the UK, but is more difficult to find, and usually has to be sourced from hobby or modelling suppliers. Since the difference is only about a quarter of a millimetre, I'll just use my stock of metric stainless steel rod. I already have some 10mm diameter, 12mm long stainless steel M5 unthreaded bushings, and I sourced this section of 6mm thick prefabricated mild steel angle plate from a mail order supplier of custom metal components in the UK. It measures 50mm deep by 50mm high by 150mm wide. After marking the cut line on the brass rod using digital vernier calipers, I set up my mini drill press with a diamond coated cutting disc which is intended to be used with rotary multi-tools. The best way to make this component of course is using a lathe, but I don't have one in my workshop and I don't have ready access to one elsewhere either, so I have to be flexible with the equipment that I do have. As I'm showing you here, I progressively cut the 11mm section from the rod by offering it up to the disc, while keeping it vertical by holding the flat end against the drill press bed. I should be setting a good example and wearing protective gloves here. I cut two brass billets, one from each end of the rod. I'll flatten the cut ends parallel with the machined end using the drill press after drilling the central mounting hole. Drilling the mounting hole precisely in the centre is a challenge without a self-centering chuck that is fitted to lathes. To achieve this, I routed a 5 8 inch diameter rebate into a piece of scrap plywood using my CNC machine. Next I inserted each billet and started the hole using a solid carbide twist drill. To finish the hole, I transferred the billet to my drill press and drilled it out with a 5mm solid carbide twist drill. A quick fit check using my guitar indicates that the tolerance is acceptable. Moving on to drilling the 5mm rebate to accept the stainless steel rod, I clamped the billet in an engineering vise attached to my drill press bed and marked the drill depth on the twist drill using electrical tape. I left approximately 1mm above the central hole to maximise rod tip insertion depth. With the drilling stages now complete, I secure the billet in the drill press chuck with an M5 set screw and nylock nut ready to round over the edges. I tried using a diamond coated metal file, but I found that the easiest way to apply the round over was by using 120 grit abrasive paper. I judge this by eye, but I'm aiming for a 1 8 inch radius, because that looks authentic to the original item. When the round over is satisfactory, I dress the surface using a finer grade of wet and dry abrasive paper to remove light scratches. Well that's all the preparation work on the brass bushing complete, so let's remove it from the drill press chuck and visually inspect it. That looks good to me, so I'll just check the fit back on the guitar and then we can move on. The next stage is to prepare the stainless steel rod by cutting it to a reasonable length, leaving enough to give me a mechanical advantage during the bending operations. 
Here I'm using an angle grinder, which I bought specifically for this project, and it makes short work of stainless steel. To obtain the correct fit for the steel rod inside the brass bushing, I need to shape the end to match the angle of the twist drill bit, which is 118 degrees, not 90 degrees as I'd originally assumed. Again, my lack of specialist metalworking tooling forces me to improvise to achieve this. I resolved to spin the steel rod in my cordless drill, and hold it against a diamond cutting disc, which is rotating in my drill press chuck. I measured out the correct angle and drew this onto a piece of scrap plywood, which I've positioned behind the cutting disc. With a steady hand and patience, which isn't one of my strong points, this improvised setup did yield a satisfactory result and a good interference fit. On one of the bushings, I drilled a shallow annulus around the 5mm rebate using a 5.5mm twist drill to encourage some of the brazing filler metal to occupy the interspace to hopefully increase the strength of the joint. The brazing stage is the one I find the most challenging to execute satisfactorily. This is a skill set in its own right, which takes a lot of practice to become proficient at, so the odds are stacked against the amateur hobbyist. I'll use this 55% silver brazing alloy, which I previously deployed when making my red special truss rod. The first job after degreasing with isopropyl alcohol is to make up a flux paste using borax flux powder and apply this to the zone to be brazed using a fine detail paintbrush. I carried out several practice runs before brazing the two tremolo arm assemblies that you'll see in the remainder of this video. None of my attempts are worthy of showing in detail, and because there are plenty of instructional videos on YouTube made by professionals, I'll just illustrate the process with some heavily edited sequences. Thankfully, so long as the brazing filler metal has flowed reasonably uniformly around the joint, unsightly brazing can be made cosmetically acceptable by filing and sanding. One general principle is to heat the brazing zone indirectly. Here I've heated the stainless steel because I encountered a significant drawback in that excessive heating softens the brass sufficiently for it to sag and distort to an oval shape. To set up the truss rod assembly ready for forming the three bends, I've attached it to the steel plate with a stainless steel spacer bushing that I reduced in length from 12mm to exactly 10mm. I have placed the 6mm stainless steel locating dowel in its hole, and secured the forming bushing for the first bend using an M5 set screw and a nylock nut. I secure the forming jig itself to the T-slot table of my mini drill press using M6 countersunk machine screws. I support the raised rod by inserting a 6mm diameter twist drill between it and the bed of the forming jig. Okay, let's fire up the Oxy Turbo 200 gas welding set once more, and hot forge these bends. While you watch me heat up the joint, I'll explain some judgments and considerations I made for this phase. Firstly, I was concerned that heating the steel in close proximity to the brazed joint might soften it. I considered applying a damp cloth around the brass bushing to counteract this, but after carrying out a test bend, this proved not to be an issue due to the low thermal conductivity of stainless steel. Secondly, I mentioned in the design section of this video that the bend radii were significantly greater than the 10mm diameter of the forming bushings. In the planning stage of this project, I considered using larger diameter discs cut from steel plate to form the bends, until I resolved that the actual bend radius could be achieved by heating a wider section of the steel rod. To avoid overheating, as soon as I feel the metal softening and beginning to yield, I apply a minimal bending force to the rod. With the first bend complete, I let the assembly cool down sufficiently until it can be handled safely, then insert the forming bushing for the second bend, and repeat the heating and bending process. Taking a closer look at the first two bends before moving on, there doesn't seem to be any issues here, and thankfully the brazing hasn't been compromised. To form the third bend, I let the assembly cool again, removed the forming bushing for the second bend, and inserted a forming bushing mounted on a section of 5mm stainless steel rod with a thread cut into it. This is a significantly larger radius bend, so I'll heat a wider section of the rod this time. You can probably see that I scored the surface of the steel plate with a guideline, so I know where to position the bent rod. Next up, with the assembly still attached to the bend forming jig, I'll use the angle grinder again to trim the main section to the desired length. 
Let's compare these three tremolo arms, the custom made one from my red special at the top, with the two that I've made below it. I've dressed one of them to remove the tarnishing marks. I'm satisfied with these, so let's finish up by filing away any flat spots with a diamond coated metal file. I'll use a round file and rotate the arm regularly. Thankfully the flat spot on the visible side of the arm is very small and shouldn't require too much work to remove. Final dressing is done with graded abrasive papers, finishing with 1200 grit because I didn't want a highly polished appearance. Well here's how my DIY tremolo arm and the plastic tip I made in my previous video compares to a professionally made one. And that's all for this video, so thanks very much for watching and do join me again next time. Thank <laughs> you.